my, my new thing has been run the extra laps. You're better off running the extra yeah. laps, right? That's yeah. rule number three on my list. We'll, we'll go over it later. Um, in, in one of these talks, I have this new set of uh, principles for execution. Rule number one is do the basics. Rule number two, I think, is never give up, never quit. Rule number three is uh, run the extra laps. Right. So I think that that's the mentality that we need to have and lean on. Another thing, one of the reasons why I changed the name and got excited about the physio gym and all of that, I was going and kind of doing some exploration on the idea of a physiotherapist versus physical therapist. And I just looked up the root word of physio. Right. And it means coming from nature or from a natural state. So a physical therapist or a physiotherapist is somebody that heals the body right? By mechanisms of going through nature or a natural state. So it, for me, I've always just been very aligned with that. I want to see the hard work and the basics done before we're going to jump to doing something that's going to be, you know, some type of, uh, um, the word is escaping me, superfluous maybe, if that's the word, something that's just extra, right? That, that probably doesn't need to be there, that the normal process can be facilitated, and like you said, like you guys are, you're, you know, we don't want to microwave the process. Now, the other thing I'll throw at it out at you is what foods do taste good coming out of the microwave? Usually shit, right? It's usually Hot Pockets and Gino's Pizza Rolls and all these foods that you shouldn't be eating anyways, right? So we basically should just get rid of the microwave and forget about that idea. There's probably nothing that's good for it right? Or nothing that's beneficial that's going to come through it. Then you think about it, it's like, well, are we really so impatient that we can't wait for the 10 to 15 minute cook to happen in the oven, the bake, right, Sean? Like it only takes 10 or 15 minutes. Are we that crazy that we can't wait 10 or 15 minutes? Are we that poor at using our time and, and basically, you know, using our schedule to our benefit where we have to use a microwave, but that's most of the place that people live, right? They're in this reactive, responsive type of lifestyle, right? That they don't ever even, it never even comes into the thought process. Like, yeah, maybe this isn't a good idea, right? Which is okay too. And again, that's you know, one of the reasons I bring it up because it's our job to help guide people in the right direction with, with thought patterns like that. That can really be the real game changer in somebody's life, right? You know, that, that one little anecdote that you drop from to somebody like that can be the thing. You guys will see this over your careers. I have people come back to me and say stuff like that all the time. You remember when you said this thing? And I repeat the same things all the time. So I don't always remember that, that I said it to them specifically, but it's always cool. You know, when they, when they say something back to you like that, you're like, ah, they were listening. Good. That, that resonated. And it makes you want to go say the same thing to somebody else again. And what else? Anything, Sean, you look like you were going to say something. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say that there's like two sides to BFR and the microwaving point also comes from the, the society that we kind of live in where everyone wants everything right away. They want the fastest healthcare. They want the seed of the results right away. So BFR being incorporated into a lot of fancy rehab plans that all of the professional athletes are getting um, is just like right. another reason why everyone else wants it in the general mm -hmm. population, like cupping with Michael Phelps and what. Cupping, uh, right. I just um, thought a couple also, I was going to say, um, so like with the allographs, like there's a really high retain rate at uh, probably around three months, which is right around the 12 week mark. That's right around where the graft is going to be the weakest too. So people might Ooh, be feeling yeah. the best, but the graft hasn't taken. So the body, the graft gets weakest. I want to say it goes down to, I saw a research article that's like 10 or 11% the actual tensile strength of an ACL at week seven to eight. Because of that, the uh, revascularization process, right? Yeah, so it takes a little bit of time. So that could potentially go into that mechanism. And then the last thing I was going to say about uh, BFR was that I went on to like a um, – like a little meeting like this, I guess, that the AASPT put on and the hosts of it were a few PTs from the NBA uh, just after, after the bubble season ended. And they were big proponents of using BFR with their athletes because they had such a high volume demand throughout the week that they tried to get the most bang for their buck with strength and training, um, strength and training kind of like timelines with them. So they're trying to do low intent. Uh, I think it was low 
high intensity, low volume or something. Low like impact. That. So, that they can, right. yeah. so that's uh, like even high level professionals were such big proponents of using BFR with those athletes because they had such high demands in the bubble, but they still needed to maintain those strength gains. Yeah, I, I've heard that argument too, right? And again, that's the hack, right? Another hack is taking steroids, right? If I want to take steroids, I can get a lot more recovery. You know what I mean? And so, so you just have to be careful how things are being positioned, right? That's a, that's a sales tactic. And you'll see people, especially surprisingly, people that have their doctorates, right, that can be biased in that way because they've only heard it from one side and they don't think about all of the other sides to the story. I think maybe we touched on this uh, early on, but if you're going to have an argument, right, you should be able to argue all sides of the story, right? If you want to have a good argument, right, you shouldn't just be able to argue your side. You need to be able to argue all of the other sides Right. And that's actually how you'll win your argument, too, as well. You have to know them all. Right. So. Basically, coming back to it, and if you if you guys probably don't really remember some of those slides that I was talking about, the sports muscle system, it actually has that on one of the slides about being high intensity, low impact. Right. That's the goal at first, because it, it, well, a lot of what comes down to what you're talking about, Sean, is this in season training. Right. How do you continue to see progress and and uh, at, at minimum maintenance during the season, well, that's the problem with traditional weightlifting, right? You get so much delayed onset muscle soreness from all the eccentric contractions and, and uh, loading that it makes it hard for those guys to recover. They're already, you know, big, long levers. They have issues with squatting and lunging all, already. So you want to take that shortcut, right? But maybe it's a, it's really, you know, more of a shortcut. But I, But I think that anytime we start getting into that philosophy, there is going to be some, even with the stuff that we do, there is going to be some level of you're taking a bit of a shortcut to try to get the results that you're trying to get to. So when that time period ends, you have to shift and go back into the, to the other equation because you can't keep sustaining that because you're going to keep, you're going to eventually run into some issues along those lines. 